National Labor Relations Board is suing Starbucks for its retaliatory firing of three uh, Starbucks workers who were trying to organize. Uh, you see the videos out there of Howard Schultz <laughs> pleading with managers to please do something and stop the, the, the rising tide of unionization. And of course, the, the, the biggest, um, uh, the most exciting story, of course, was what happened uh, at Staten Island, where a, an independent union, the Amazon Labor Union, uh, one of its heads, uh, Christian Smalls, um, uh, successfully unionized uh, a couple of uh, Amazon warehouses and uh, essentially created a blueprint. Here is uh, Bernie Sanders, and and they're you know um, we, we've talked about how uh, they they were seeking more support from politicians in the run up to that um, uh, election. Well, they're getting much more of it now, and so. Um, uh, here's Bernie Sanders um, at a rally just yesterday alongside yeah, Alexandra. Yesterday? Yeah, I think it was yesterday alongside Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, who also spoke, who, to your point, was the politician more directly called out by by Smalls, the organizer. And, and she stepped up to the plate the second time around. Today. What you have done in taking on Amazon and having this facility here in Staten Island, the very first Amazon facility to unionize in the entire country is an extraordinary achievement. You have taken on one of the most powerful corporations in America. They spent millions of dollars trying to defeat you. You are taking on one of the wealthiest guys in America, worth $170 billion, and you beat them. And I'll tell you what this, what this struggle is about. It's not just Amazon Staten Island. This is the struggle that is taking place all across this country. Working people are sick and tired are falling further and further behind while billionaires like Bezos become much richer. Now, when you're worth $170 billion as Bezos is, when you've got a corporation that is making huge profits, you know what? You can pay your workers good wages, you can provide good benefits, and you can have decent working conditions, not what you got right now. So I want to tell you, you may not know this, you may not know this, but you have been an inspiration for millions of workers all across this country. Because they have looked at you and they have said, these guys in Staten Island, New York, stood up to an extraordinarily powerful corporation. If they could do it in Staten Island, we could do it throughout this country. And, you know, um, the, the, the value of having politicians there um, uh, before the vote, after the vote, is because it brings the press there. And it begins to inspire people across the country. And it makes it just simply creates uh, momentum. It makes it easier for organizers, ultimately. It makes it easier for them to raise money. It makes it... Um, it gives them some sense of, uh, uh, or at least it it projects a sense of strength uh, in the organizing movement. I mean, so yes, uh, um, the these you know uh, folks like Sanders and uh, AOC and others were criticized for not showing up. And uh, the good thing is, is that that criticism supposedly is deployed to get them to react, and they reacted, and so they're there. And the other thing that's important in terms of just from an electoral standpoint, because obviously none of this happens without the, the grassroots organizing that really just um, w w was totally grassroots. There was no institute. There was some institutional support from some unions helped out in terms of like uh, providing some uh, some staffing and uh, some resources. But this was very much a grassroots independent uh, a movement. But. It does not happen in a vacuum. And uh, Ryan Grimm wrote a piece uh, just a couple of days ago that outlined what allowed for this victory. 
Uh, and that was specifically Joe Biden naming Jennifer Abruzzo general counsel of the National Labor Relations uh, Board. And when she was nominated early on, this is in, well, I guess this is uh, about four or five months ago. Um, Amazon, under pressure, agreed to a settlement in which they allowed, uh, they agreed to allow workers to organize inside their facilities. Just not on the shop floor, but in all the other places that workers inside a facility go, the, um, the, the union could organize. And uh, quoting from uh, Abruzzo, the settlement uh, agreement provides a crucial commitment from Amazon to millions of its workers across the United States that it will not interfere with their right to act collectively to improve their workplace by forming a union or taking other collective action. Now, make no doubt about it. This is a function of this appointee by a Democratic president. Um, there. Uh, and, 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 and you can look back in, in, in Grimm's piece outlines some of the areas um, where this made a crucial difference. Uh, HuffPost reported that the uh, union folks created flyers identifying the most prolific union busters who were in the warehouse. They would put stacks of the flyers in the break rooms throughout the facility, again, a function of this agreement, so that everyone could see them and know how much Amazon was spending to fly anti-union consultants in from around the country, because all of this stuff has to be filed. So uh, Connor Spence told um, the, the Huffington Post, HuffPost, uh, Dave Jameson, that it, who was an Amazon worker, that he would follow the consultants around the warehouse and handing workers copy of their labor department filings that showed that they were getting $300 per hour uh, to talk to them. And he said it was a really uh, powerful tactic um, because it showed that if Amazon was willing to pay $300 per hour to these people, that the union must have some power. And also, and, I mean, uh, just a quick aside, George Schultz was, uh, we played a clip of him last week talking about how the union is an uh, outside forces coming in to disrupt their community and their family at Starbucks. Pretty sure the definition of outside forces are lawyers being hired at $300 an hour for the explicit purpose of busting the union, a.k.a. the internal family. Yeah, that Howard Schultz, by the way. Yes. Oh, Howard George. Schultz. I said and, George Schultz. Sorry. Yes. My apologies. And, and, and there was another story here that uh, Spence told Jameson um, that there was a one extremely effective female consultant who would chat up all the male workers. And the quote goes like this, all the guys in her department were in love with her. He said, the men defended her when union organizers called her out. But when they produced copies of her disclosure filings showing that she had made nearly $20,000 for <laughs> one week of union busting, they felt betrayed. And this was all just that material benefit of being able to organize on within the facility and just outside uh, the warehouse where, you know, Smalls has recounted where they would meet, they would feed people, they would share uh, weed, whatever it was, um, that would not have been able to happen under maybe under an Obama administration, I don't know, but certainly under a Trump administration, that's not going to happen. Well, it and, didn't happen under an Obama administration. His NLRB was not as supportive. There was much less fertile ground. We talked about this with Alex Press again when you were when you were out, and and it's been uh, it's been jarring how much more supportive Biden's NLRB has been, even with like small uh, small movements like this. Yeah, and it or, makes a big deal in the final yeah. analysis. These small mechanical sort of changes. Uh, allow organizing, you know, give organizers, you know, some some advantage. And so this is an important thing to keep in mind. These are not um, mutually exclusive sort of endeavors. Um, but we will talk more about that in the uh, weeks and months to come.